Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Today on Ask the Messengers, our topic is addiction and how heroin in Detroit has changed since 1967. Our guests today are Charlie C. Coleman, president of Real Michigan and a recovery coach trainer. And Billy Kaysan, well-known Detroiter and publisher of Hair Designs magazine. Plus real stories from real people. It took me to jail at 53. It it brought me to my knees that I had lost my home, my cars. I found myself living in the basement apartment in a room. You know what? After I started shooting it, I didn't care. When I was in school, you know, I would try to, I wasn't really addicted to it where I was sick every day or anything. So no one really knew. But then when my buddy shot me up, that was it. It's all here on this episode of Ask the Messengers. And now here's your host, Pastor Lester Lewis. Hello and thank you for tuning in. I am Pastor Lester Lewis and we want to welcome you to Ask the Messengers. Uh, Ask the Messengers is a show that's all about real people sharing their real life stories and I believe that they are so bold uh, because they're sharing not only uh, their victories but also some of the defeats that they've been through uh, but ultimately where they are right now and that is at the place in which recovery is possible and so today we've got a great show lined up for you and I'm so glad that you tuned in uh, today uh, our topic is heroin in Detroit and how it has changed from the days of the 1967 Detroit riots. Now I know you've probably seen the the, the, the movie, and uh, maybe you have. If you haven't seen the movie, uh, there's been mixed reviews about it. A lot of things happened, as you know, in '67 the Detroit riots were happening. Uh, but uh, we want you also to know that uh, that during that time uh, that there are there were there are two gentlemen that we have with us today uh, who not only can talk about it, uh, but they also they were living. Uh, the actual experience and so uh, they're going to share uh, their experience with us today and so uh, I am so proud to have with us and we're going to introduce our, our our guests and and so we're going to go for to a testimony first and then we'll be right back um, behind my relapses the shame and the guilt caused me to stay out there a little longer and it because I was so ashamed that I was using again. It took me to jail at 53. It, it brought me to my knees that I had lost my home, my cars. I found myself living in the basement apartment in a room with my partner living on a, a twin size bed. What I would suggest is you ask for help. Don't keep getting high to medicate how you're feeling or the shame or the guilt that you may have. Ask for help. Just tell somebody that you need to get some help. And help is here. All right, we're back. And listen, today uh, we have two gentlemen with us today uh, who absolutely have a great story to tell. Uh, and these brothers were uh, not only uh, are they living testimonies of the 1967 riots, but they are also living examples uh, that, that even though you may have been through something, uh, you can also get to something uh, if, you stay, if you stay committed uh, to the cause. Uh, first and foremost, we have with us today uh, Mr. Billy Kaysan, uh, and he is the publisher of Hair Designer Magazine, and uh, he's been uh, doing that for over th for 35 years, and uh, he is a man who's been on the front lines. He's, he's not been hiding in, 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 the, in the office rooms. He, he's been on the streets uh, talking with people and helping people uh, here in the Metro Detroit for years, and we're so happy to have him on the show with us today. And then, uh, and also, uh, we have uh, Mr. Charlie C. And, and, and if you don't know Charlie C., something wrong with you. Uh, Charlie C. is the president of uh, Real Michigan. Uh, he's an, it's an advocacy group uh, that fights for prevention 
uh, and recovery. And I, and I am so proud to say that this brother is, uh, he is one month short of 30 years in recovery. And that's wonderful. Amen. All right. So listen, uh, Mr. Billy, how you doing, sir? How you doing? I'm well, I'm well. All right, Mr. Charlie, how are you, sir? Fantastic. Good, good. Listen, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to, you know, take you for a time travel back to 1967 uh, here in the city of Detroit. And uh, in the year, uh, in that year, as you know, uh, the, the movie is out and it's talking about the riots and all the other things. And I don't know if you've seen it and if it's been properly depicted or not, but we want to hear your perspective uh, from uh, about what happened. Uh, and, and, and most of all, how did heroin impact the city at the time? And, and what do you remember about the time? Uh, Brother Charlie, can you, can you get started with us on that? Well, it's not about remembering. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived it. In 1967, uh, black uh, people in the city of Detroit, uh, as a result of hard work from our predecessors, had uh, brought Detroiters up. Uh, we were doing well. We were well educated. And uh, during that time, uh, because actually I was in the after hour, the print shop that the riot started. Is that right? I knew exactly what happened and why it happened. There was a state of, uh, you know, the Detroit police were kind of like a gangster squad. Okay. And uh, for years they had been going on corners uh, telling. Uh, the guys hanging out on the corners uh, to give up the corner, uh, get off the corner. If you were with your wife or children, uh, they or they would pick you up. There wasn't a lot of arrest at that time. They would pick you up, take you around uh, the block, and uh, elbow you in your ribs with flashlights. And so, I'll touch uh, you up a little bit. Huh? They Just would to touch, touch you up man. a lot, and and they did that. It was a gangster squad. In fact, Detroit was run by gangsters. Uh, you know, f uh, from looking back. Uh, uh, you know, there was a lot of stuff that was happening with gangs, and they were large gangs, like the Purple Gang, and right. and uh, some of the uh, politicians, okay. you know, spread the, the, the consciousness or the unconsciousness okay. of that uh, spread uh, to uh, the city. Okay, Charlie, I'm going I'm to come back. I got more. I got more questions for you, certainly. And so, uh, Brother Billy, uh, listen, we, we, how, what do you remember about that time, 1967, Detroit? Well, see, after the riots is when the, uh, it was harrowing before the riots, but you had to go way back in the alley to get some harrowing at that particular time before the riots. Mm -hmm. But after the riots, it was something they called uh, P-Dope. It was a little peak cap that they, a dollar cap. They put the dope in the dollar cap. And they sold it to you. And that little dollar cap would knock you on the ground. It was powerful. But see, what happened is when you got a city and the city, uh, the police can't control the city, then they do, they put the Haron in. Mm -hmm. The Haron can control you. You can't do no riding when you nodding. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Oh, when you right. got your head between your leg, you're nodding. You can't do no riding. But they knew what was going to happen. Because that's the same thing that the British did to the Chinamans when they took over China. They didn't have enough troops to keep the Chinamans in control, so they gave them heroin. So, so heroin yeah. was used as, as a tool as to a tool control. to control the people. Mm -hmm. I used to go to parties before the riot. They'd be playing James Brown, and people be dancing all up on the side of the wall. But after the riots, you go to the party. They don't put that peak, that uh, P-dope on the little record album, and they would snort it. Mm. See, they didn't, they, as long as they could shoot, they were shooting dope, it wasn't too many dope fiends, but once they find out they could snort it, they come out with that book, Iceberg Slim came out with that book telling you you could snort it, so they started snorting it. There wasn't no dancing. Jane Brown was still playing, but everybody was nodding. All right. Well, Billy, listen, I, I got some more questions for you coming up. Uh, Mr. Char Charlie, listen, I, I've got a question for you. Uh, f compare heroin use uh, from the old days in the 60s, and I say old days, I don't mean it in a, in a derogatory way, but the days of the 60s as, to, uh, uh, as opposed to today. Well, I only can ex talk from experience, like Billy just described. There was... Uh, you had to go way back to find heroin in 1967. It wasn't a heroin time. 
and that's why they had to get us high. Uh, heroin then uh, probably was bought from China. They called it China White. Uh, they called them penny caps, and they put your head between your legs. Today, it's just a matter of, it's, it's the same thing. The only thing is they're using different mixes. See, they've always mixed the drugs uh, with different chemicals that give different reactions, but the, the bottom line to the, uh, the addiction is obsession and compulsion, which keeps you trapped. All right. Well, listen, uh, Billy and Charlie. Listen, we, we're gonna come back uh, with some with, with some more uh, of the stories that you guys have to tell. We can't wait to hear it. Uh, but listen, don't go anywhere. We're gonna be right back with more Ask the Messengers. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. Hi, I'm Ashley Greaser, the Office Manager at Premier Supportive Services. Here at Premier, we offer a variety of services that include residential service, 24-hour residential, attended care, semi-independent, as well as many other services. So if you know of anyone that has been involved in a car accident, we are located at 17555 James Cousin, Suite 2, or you can give us a call at 313-345-3668. Pastor Lewis will be right back with our special guests, Charlie C. and Billy Kasai. God's World, a Detroit institution at West Seven Mile in Schaefer says, get them while they last. The Obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast. Get your church supplies, communion cups, tied envelopes, Bibles, inspirational books by top authors. Call in your orders at 313 862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. My drug of choice was heroin, but I used multiple drugs. I used crystal meth, crack cocaine, Xanax. Yeah, um, I first tried heroin when I was 15. My, um, I got this girl and uh, her grandma gave it to us. And yeah, I, that was, my life went downhill from there. I started using heroin every day, probably up until about, I used it every day up until about 18, and I started shooting it, and yeah, it was all bad. My mom, um, I, I stressed her out all the time. She had to have a double heart bypass, her chest is always hurting, and, and I'm sure it's because of me. You know what, after I started shooting it, I didn't care, when I was in school, you know, I would try to, I wasn't really addicted to it where I was sick every day or anything, so no one really knew. But then when my buddy shot me up, that was it. Everyone knew. Welcome back to Ask the Messengers. Listen, we are uh, having a great conversation today uh, with Charlie C., president of Real Michigan, uh, and also Billy Kaysen, who is the publisher of Hair Design, Designer Magazine, and uh, we are talking about uh, Detroit in the 1960s during the 67 riots and uh, some of the climate that was going on then but uh, we're also talking about the the climate of uh, or the drug culture during that time as well and, and so uh, uh, Billy can you tell me uh, listen are, are there different types of heroin uh, from 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 what was the, what was happening then to now are there different types well, see, I don't really know too much about heroin. I never used it. Okay. You know, I mean? I, the only thing I, I knew is about the heroin they had back in the 67 because mm -hmm. it was everywhere. Mm -hmm. They had s streets on like Blaine. <clears throat> you could buy your heroin at this house. You get a heroin. You buy one cap, you get a cap free. You buy heroin at the other house, you get a free chicken dinner. Are you serious? They they, they literally had, it was advertising yeah, in, in the window. Really? In, in the window. The police was it was hands off. Police wasn't messing with anybody that was selling heroin, you was good. Because they wanted to punish us for tearing up the city. That's what happened. So the police would drive down the street. And see these signs in the window, but they didn't do anything about it. It was hands off, and all the, they were shooting galleries. You could go in there and get your get get your heroin, buy up, and shoot right there in the dope house. Okay, so a shooting gallery is where you could buy and also use it at the same at the same, same time. Yeah, okay, same time, 
<clears throat> and the heroin would uh, was was like I said was P dope, one some of the best dope that you could get. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't never mess with it, no heroin because I could see the effects that it had on people. Right. You know, once you start shooting hair around, that was it. Because you, once you finished that and it wore off, you was looking for your next hit. Uh, but listen, uh, Charlie C., I got a question for you. Uh, I know that you and uh, you're dealing with uh, an advocacy, you're an advocacy group that, that fights uh, for prevention and, and recovery. Uh, can you tell me this? And, and I, I think everyone really wants to know the answer to this question. Uh, can someone uh, who has been addicted to heroin uh, live a fairly normal life? Well, in today's world, in fact, I was addicted to heroin. Uh, it was really, the, it really wasn't the substance. After you start using uh, something that you uh, think you find some type of feeling in or motivation in, then the addiction takes over. Uh, and so, yes, I used the heroin. And uh, today, we have more information. See, never before has a way been proven in, in the lives of addicts uh, that there's a way out. There's uh, solutions. There's, uh, in fact, what we're involved in in Real Michigan is providing uh, uh, recovery, education, advocacy, and leadership to inform people. See, you know, there's nothing like someone who is in a hole and then someone who's been in that hole and knows the way out. Mm -hmm. And so we know the way out. And so we're trying to affect uh, not only Detroit, but uh, uh, 10 regions of Michigan as well. We're a federally funded organization, Real Michigan. Uh, you can contact us, us at realmichigan.org, and you can find a lot more about it. But we're a grassroots organization right. that deals with information, education for anyone who wants to know. And uh, we're also encouraging, especially during these times, uh, we're not only recover in, uh, in this city now, we vote. So who we are as a recovering people can change an entire election. Uh, listen, Billy, I've got a, I've got a question here for you. Uh, listen, what's, there's a lot happening in the media, uh, and they're covering and they're talking about heroin use and opiates. Uh, and so uh, why, why, why is this big push, or, or, this, or now the media is just now covering it, shall I say, uh, uh, the use of heroin? <clears throat> well, as far as, you know, it's um, become an epidemic again. It was back in, back in 67. You know, it was it was put out there by the the ruling class. It was it was gave to us so to keep us, you know, uh, from rioting really, mm -hmm. because when you high off a of hair on you 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 be seeing them guys nodding. They're not ready to sleep. See <clears throat> see how I take you from the position that you the position that you are in. If you sitting on right on the street corner, you sleep, you shoot some hair on. You end up in your mind, you're in Paris somewhere. You enjoy, you hanging out, and you partying, but you you don't have to even leave your spot. You're sitting right there nodding. The gentleman over here that said he, he used to use, he'll verify that. You're not asleep. You think they, you think they sleep, but they're not asleep. They somewhere in Paris or in the Bahamas or some party. So that's that's what the, 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 the thrill of the drug, it takes you from the position that you're in and put you somewhere where you want to be. So, you know what I'm saying? And you ain't, only thing that you had to do was uh, shoot the hair around. But as far as the, uh, what's going on now, I really don't be associated around with too many, you know, people that's using hair around and stuff now. So, only thing I can say is, it, what did you come from now is people buy the medication like for pain and stuff like that. And once they run out of that, and you can't get no more, I think they call it oxy. I don't know what they call it, but it's some kind of medicine that you get that the doctor give you. And once you run out of the prescription and stuff, you need that same, you want that same high. You don't want them pain, so you go turn to the Hyron. And Hyron is cheaper, but it's, so that's why so many people are getting addicted now from actually prescription drugs. Wow, that's but once nice. the prescription drugs yeah. run out, then they got to, you know, Cause they're kind of clamping down on that a little bit. All right. Well, listen. I mean, obviously, there's there's different there's different uh, avenues in which uh, in which it occurs. But let me ask you this question, uh, uh, Brother Charlie. Do you believe that there is uh, that the government is really doing anything uh, to help fight this epidemic? I mean, you know, are, are they really fighting uh, the drug the <clears throat> drug problem? Well, they don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. See, 
there is no choice any, anymore because uh, it's not you might die. The, the uh, chemicals that they are cutting heroin with now, like fentanyl, to, uh, to accentuate the high. Uh, but it's reached uh, uh, an alarming rate that no one expected. See, because with, with heroin, you want to get as close to a, this sensation, as close to Paris as you possibly can, okay. like Billy was talking about. Right, right. You want to go to the moon. Right. You want to hear the bells. You know what I mean? And uh, you want to go in dreamland if it's only for a minute. Right. And so it's killing so many people uh, uh, today. And it's it's gotten too close to home. Well, well, brother Charles, let me ask you this question because I, I've heard I've heard this said, and 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 I, I and and please tell me if this is true or not. Uh, you know, I, I'm a layman when it comes to uh, the drug issues, and uh, I really haven't been exposed to it that way. But and, and obviously, you've got some experience with it. Uh, I was told that as long as it was in the hood, uh, they were giving out jail time. Uh, but the moment it hit the suburbs, now they want to start programs. Uh, is, is that is that true? It's true to the extent that it has become so apparent and the uh, the overdoses have come uh, more than just stereotype uh, see the stereotype and the stigma of addiction has changed it can be your neck it can be the senator's son or the congressman's daughter and that's a little bit too close mm -hmm. and so uh, a lot of times they are embarrassed by the fact that they have allowed the circumstances to get. And so organizations like Real Michigan are formed with boots on the ground trying to do something about the opioid circumstance. But like Billy said, it's been around ever since really 69. Really quickly, Billy, can you tell me, uh, can anything be done to help people get off heroin? Just, just real, with a, if you can give me one, one good, good, good answer, what, can, what would that be? Well, see, that's a decision that you have to make for yourself. What's happening is that people get in predicaments and <clears throat> they try to use, you know, actually Hiron or other to soften the predicament that they're in. Okay, see, we, listen, we're going to continue this conversation in just a moment. Uh, listen, we got to cut to a break. Uh, listen, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We've got more coming. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. God's World, a Detroit institution at West 7 Mile in Schaefer says, get them while they last. The Obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast. Get your church supplies, communion cups, tied envelopes, Bibles, inspirational books by top authors. Call in your orders at 313-862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. Hi, I'm Ashley Greaser, the Office Manager at Premier Supportive Services. Here at Premier, we offer a variety of services that include residential service, 24-hour residential, attended care, semi-independent, as well as many other services. So if you know of anyone that has been involved in a car accident, we are located at 17555 James Cousin, Suite 2. Or you can give us a call at 313-345-3668. Back to Ask the Messengers. Again, I am Pastor Lester Lewis. Uh, my guests today have been Billy Kaysen, uh, producer, a publisher of Hair Designer Magazine, and also Charlie C., president of Real Michigan. Uh, listen, gentlemen, uh, obviously we've been talking about 1967 and, and, and heroin and, and, and the culture uh, that has, has come up. Listen, if you could share some final thoughts about um, what you believe about the, the, uh, the, the culture then and the culture now as it relates to drugs and, and those who may be addicted and recovery. Um, uh, what, what would you have to say that, about that? Uh, Brother Billy, would you go first? Well, <clears throat> Fires, just like, <clears throat> like I said before, what you have to do when you have these uh, situations that you get in, you need to sign, uh, find a new, another way of solving the problem. See what I'm saying? Heroin or, or any type of drugs, that's just a temporary fix. That's not going to fix it forever. You got to find something that's going to completely, you, you, they got, like, he, like the gentleman said over there, they got different organizations you can turn to now. 
and you don't you can't handle it by yourself. Charlie, how about you, sir? Well, see, the the good news is, and it's exciting. The model has changed for recovery. Uh, instead of just counselors who have been college educated, uh, now there we've been extremely effective and successful. There are thousands of recovering people now for long-term recovery. I'm a, not only am I the president of Real Michigan, I'm a recovery coach trainer and a recovery coach. And peer specialization has been extremely successful uh, where you have one addict uh, uh, speaking with another addict who has been there. And they can show you the way out. There are meetings that and uh, pathways that uh, are options for people uh, to try to get out of the trap or the situation that they're in. And there are people who really do understand. All right. Well, listen, I want to thank both of you gentlemen for, for being on the show and certainly for, for bringing your life experience to, uh, to Ask the Messengers. And absolutely, uh, I believe that every life has a message attached to it. And so thank you so much for, uh, Brother Billy, for what you shared and, and certainly, Charlie, what you shared with us. And, and we're so grateful. Now, listen, we just want to just let you know, Ask the Messengers, uh, this show is absolutely helping people, and we know that it is. Uh, there's a saying that says that evil prevails when good men do nothing. Uh, we need your help to stay on the air. We need your help to uh, keep this programming coming. We need your help to, to continue the message to go out to people who are addicted or perhaps maybe even uh, a grandmother or mother who doesn't know uh, what, where to turn or what to do. This show is bringing help. On the screen right now is the information, and all you have to do is connect with us in some way. And won't you give generously? Every little bit helps, and certainly every big portion will provide and meet need. So we just thank you so much uh, for, in advance, for your donation, uh, for going to askthemessages.com or uh, sending it in uh, through what we call snail mail by check or money order. Well, listen. Uh, today, uh, I, I thank God so much for these, these men, and, and our prayer certainly is that if this message is hitting you at, at wherever you are, uh, whether you're at your place of addiction or you're in your place of recovery, uh, may, maybe you, did, you didn't believe that there was hope for you. Uh, but, but but after seeing the seeing these testimonies and hearing uh, these real life stories, uh, that you will know that there is a way out. In fact, we want you to know uh, that 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 as long as you believe you can, it's more than a possible. And so today, thank God so much for these men and and so for their testimonies. And and certainly, we want you to know uh, that your story is not over. Uh, that there is still hope. As long as you are still here, there is still hope. And so we look forward to uh, having you back on the show again shortly. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching Ask the Messengers.